China's pursuit of a modern and capable carrier-based aviation force has reached a defining moment with the development of the J-35, the growing maturity of the Fujian aircraft carrier, and the strategic shift from ski jump stobar to electromagnetic catabar operations. This transformation represents not simply a technical advancement, but a strategic reorientation of how China intends to project power, secure sea lanes, and enforce regional stability within its maritime periphery. The emergence of the J-35 as a stealth carrier-borne fighter designed specifically for electromagnetic catapult launches is a milestone indicating that China is not just catching up with global naval aviation standards, but is consciously crafting its own doctrine of sea airspace operations for the coming decades. The J-35's design philosophy demonstrates a convergence of stealth shaping, aerodynamic efficiency, and combat network integration. The aircraft features a carefully contoured fuselage to reduce radar cross-section, internal weapons bays for low observability strike operations, and the incorporation of advanced sensor fusion to enhance situational awareness. In operational terms, the J-35 is not merely intended to fly from a carrier deck. It is meant to function as a node in a wider combat information architecture. When coupled with airborne early warning aircraft, naval surface radars, and satellite-supported networks, the J-35 becomes part of a system that emphasizes coordinated surveillance, electronic superiority, and real-time target acquisition. The Fujian aircraft carrier, equipped with electromagnetic catapults, marks the core infrastructure enabling this capability. The transition from short takeoff ramps to electromagnetic catapults fundamentally changes carrier aviation. J-35 aircraft can now launch at greater takeoff weights, including full armament and full fuel load, without sacrificing range or maneuverability. This boosts sortie generation rates and expands operational options. Heavy airborne early warning aircraft can be deployed, significantly extending fleet level aerial detection range. Unmanned combat aerial vehicles can be launched with heavier payload configurations. Altogether, the Fujian and J-35 combination produces a layered air domination and surveillance umbrella that strengthens China's ability to manage its near-sea strategic environment. A central strength of this evolution lies in the synergy between platforms. Rather than treating each system as an independent asset, China appears to be developing an interconnected maritime combat ecosystem. The Fujian's air wing, centered on the J-35, collaborates with Type 055 destroyers that provide long-range sensors and layered missile defense. Unmanned air platforms extend reconnaissance reach. Submarines create underwater denial zones. Land-based missile forces form outer belts of anti-access deterrence. The result is a multi-domain structure where the carrier task group acts as both hammer and shield, able to threaten incursions while maintaining protective coverage for key maritime regions. China's development path is distinct from that of the United States. While the United States emphasizes global blue water projection with carrier forces operating worldwide, China's early and mid-term application remains focused on the Western Pacific theater, particularly within and around the first island chain. The proximity of Chinese ports, maintenance facilities, and logistics hubs means that operational tempo and support cycles can remain tightly coordinated. This confers a regional resiliency that is not dependent on long-range resupply chains, thereby enhancing China's ability to remain persistent in its home maritime zone. At the same time, realistic assessment requires acknowledging areas where challenges persist. Practical experience in sustained carrier operations during real-world conflict remains untested for the People's Liberation Army Navy. Carrier flight deck operations at night, in stormy seas, under full combat conditions, require extensive procedural expertise and pilot proficiency built up through continuous practice. The integration of artificial intelligence decision support software, advanced materials for heat-resistant catapult components, 
and improvements in next-generation jet engines remains a work in progress. Yet these gaps are not unique to China. They are common hurdles faced by any nation engaged in advanced carrier aviation. The domestic industrial dimension is crucial. The J-35 reflects not an isolated effort, but the maturation of China's aerospace manufacturing base, particularly in Shenyang and across the state aviation sector. The aircraft embodies dual-use technological progress in composite materials, avionics miniaturization, propulsion research, and automated manufacturing processes. The carrier itself reflects progress in naval construction, electromagnetic engineering, and shipboard power generation. Each successful subsystem advancement feeds into a sustainable industrial capability, reducing reliance on foreign suppliers, and establishing a self-replenishing national defense ecosystem. Looking ahead to the early and mid-2030s, one can reasonably project that the J-35 will evolve into a platform capable of deploying long-range precision weapons, engaging in deep penetration strike missions, and coordinating with semi-autonomous unmanned aircraft performing electronic warfare and reconnaissance. As anti-satellite systems and high-altitude surveillance networks improve, the J-35 could become woven into an orbital surface maritime targeting continuum that integrates signals from space-based sensors, airborne radars, and naval detection grids. In such a scenario, the aircraft acts as both shooter and data relay, selectively transmitting targeting information to missile platforms within the task group or onshore. The strategic significance of this development is profound. Rather than seeking symbolic parity with American carriers, China is structuring a uniquely Chinese model of naval aviation power that is optimized for its strategic geography and security objectives. This leads toward a future where the Fujian-class carriers and their successors form mobile command centers, not just for aircraft launch, but for data coordination, drone control, electromagnetic warfare, and theater-wide naval synchronization. The J-35 then becomes not just a fighter, but an intelligent participant in networked warfare. China's entry into the Katobar era signals a broader shift in the discourse of maritime security in East Asia. Control of the airspace above the seas becomes inseparable from control of the information space, and the Fujian J-35 pairing embodies this union of physical and informational dominance. While others may debate geopolitical implications, what is clear is that China is investing in long-term capability, training cycles, and technological evolution that position its naval aviation on a trajectory of expanding influence and operational flexibility. The emergence of the J-35 and the Fujian represents the beginning of a generational transformation in how China views and conducts maritime defense. It illustrates the shift from coastal protection to extended maritime presence and from tactical reaction to strategic initiative. For analysts, observers, and those following the development of the People's Liberation Army Navy, this evolution will be one of the defining defense stories of the coming decade. For viewers interested in understanding where China's aviation and naval strategy is heading, Following the maturation of this carrier-fighter pairing will provide insight into how the nation intends to shape the strategic equilibrium of the surrounding seas well into the mid-21st century. If you find this analysis relevant and want to follow future discussions on China's evolving defense capabilities and maritime power projection, I invite you to stay connected and support the channel.